Hey everybody, welcome to Hop, Skip, and a Dream Travel Podcast, episode number five. Not, not four, not three, five. Today we will be discussing the Disney Genie app, the Disney Genie Plus service, and the Fancy Ride Pass is what I'm going to call it, as others have. And we're going to be discussing our upcoming trip to Walt Disney World. So stay tuned. everybody welcome back to episode number five of the hop skip and a dream podcast it can be found on youtube and also on all audio podcasts everywhere that are linked up through anchor fm such as spotify itunes and the like so today i have my special guest co-host my lovely wife ali also known as pause lover over on twitch and youtube she's a game streamer she's adjusted her schedule recently but we can discuss that schedule on twitch another time but go check out our youtube channel and twitch channel links are down in the description below pause what's your favorite disney character uh so my favorite disney character would be the most pain in the butt character there is you you think chip and dale oh no no they are tame in comparison it is Stitch, the one and only, not Leroy, but Stitch. Oh, I freaking love it. Amazing. Spirit animal. I have so many Stitch-related things. I could have a whole podcast for you guys on that if I actually tried. Mm -hmm. We're not going to, but at least not yet. But... Alice, Alice, pause, Allie, whatever, I'm sorry. Allie is the one who got me stuck into Disney going to the parks. As a matter of fact, anything Disney travel related is all her fault. Um, and actually her mom's too. It so was for, her fault mainly, yeah. It was for our wedding honeymoon, not anniversary, our honeymoon, that we went to Disney for the first time, Disneyland for the first time, where her love for Stitch came out in a very rambunctious way. <laughs> she, uh, we were at California Adventure, and she tried to bowl over some kids to get in line first to meet Stitch. What, what was the paraphrased way of you telling me to um, let go? Oh my god! Honestly, I don't remember. All I know is I was so upset. I was distraught. I was so upset. Because um, I made her wait to let the kids get the first pictures with Stitch. So, anyways, so we went in 2011 and we met our friends Taz Mouse and their daughter Little Bit. I won't use her real name just because you know reasons. Although, if you've watched any of our cruise vlogs that are on here, I'm sure her name has come up, actually. But, be that as it may, um, we then went back in 2013 for a Halloween trip with them. And then we talked them into going on a Disney cruise almost almost immediately after that. Oh, yeah, we went with our friend Michael on the Halloween trip. And I think it was... It was, what, May 2014, so almost six months after we 
went to Disneyland for the second time. It was Halloween. No, we went. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We went in Halloween. Yeah. And it was almost six months later that we booked oh, our Disney yeah. cruise. Yeah. Where we convinced Taz and Mouse to come with us. And we let Michael's mom know. And Mind you, okay, this was meant to be a trip for two. Okay. Then became five. And then my mom wanted to go. No, no. no. It became eight first because Michael's mom and his brother. Yep. And then... um, And then mom wanted to go because of uh, circumstances. In the family type of thing. So. And so nine people. No. Yeah, nine people. Hold on. It is nine. For some reason, I was thinking there's a four. Yeah, nine people. Two to nine. Nine. There you go. But, yeah. It was still a fun trip, no matter what. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And we'll be going over our next trip on the Disney Cruise another time. Yes. But for now, let's get back to the actual topics at hand, because I derailed us. Let's talk about the Disney Genie app. We'll start with the basic app first. The basic app is just that. It's free to use. It's very basic because it is just trying to help you navigate wait times at the parks. A ride, a popular ride might have a two to three hour wait. They have seen them as much as eight hours. That's crazy. But it will take you to, oh, hey, this other ride that's nearby is 20 minute wait. 15 minute wait, whatever. So if you're if you're willing to skip lines to get as many rides as you can into things, then it would be beneficial to use the Genie app. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, I would think so. It, it would be, you know, better than not. Me being the type of person that likes to have everything planned. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but like... Our ride list for when we're going to be there is already set on what we're doing. Not like what times, but like what we're doing and stuff like that. It's just yeah. to some people who don't go to this degree of uh, planning and then just a little bit of help, a little push. I think this is a good app. I think it'll it'll work out in the long run for sure. Yeah. And then. The Disney Genie Plus app. This is the one that's getting a lot of people's ears in a twist. Sorry, I couldn't resist. (laughs) It is a $15 a day in Disney World and $20 a day in Disneyland for the opportunity to ride up to four, up to 40 different attract. Well, up to possibly more 40 attractions in Walt Disney World, 15 plus in Disneyland for the fee. Now, pause is going to go over a quick example here, but just a real quick iteration. If you buy your tickets in advance and you add this to it, it applies to all tickets that are in your package. So if we're going to, if I'm going to be booking the trip for you, I'm not going to try and steer this tw- this package to you and that will cost me some money probably in the long run. But I think the benefit of what I'm about to explain after pause is a little example here. I will, will save you money in the long run and will keep you coming back to me for business. So pause. What's your little example that you were talking about earlier? Okay. So for me, I'm not a fan of Disney plus at all in the, large scheme of things of how they currently have it. So for Disney world, cause that's where we're going. Okay. So it's $15 per person. So times two times eight days. Correct. Yep. That is going to cost us $240 on top of everything. So is say we don't we miss the gondola ride and everything to get to said park. We're gonna need to take an Uber. 
yeah, it's not going to cost that much money. But again, that's that could be money going towards an Uber or food that we would be getting like our meals in the park. That's two hundred and forty dollars. That that's a that's almost what we would have to be paying anyway for the eight days if we're going to be there. And then even if we're not in the park and we want to eat, okay, Uber, uh, DoorDash, DoorDash, whatever, not Uber. Yeah. Uber, Uber Eats. Eats. Yeah. And anything like that, like that's again, not $240, but still for over a week, like we, that money could be going somewhere else. Yeah. But again, like, uh, like say for again, a family of four, that's still about the same amount of money. So a family of four for four days is about the same amount, but like these people have kids and everything and they'd rather spend $240 on like souvenirs or ears for their kids or like a princess dress or something. That. That two hundred and forty dollars is taking away from my lightsaber. <laughs> Not that I'm actually gonna go do Savi's workshop this time, but we just don't have the money right now. But who knows? There's a lot of time between now and then we can win the Mega Millions or Powerball. <laughs> Anyways, the but the point is is you have to actually pay for that up front with your tickets if you buy the Genie Plus service in advance. Now, if you were to say, hold off on that, listen to my advice here and hold off on that, you could then purchase it for the days that you might think that you might want it. So say you're going to Magic Kingdom on a Saturday, and that's going to be a busy day no matter what time of year you're going, not just the annual pass holders, but people go on the weekends. So that might be a day that you want to spend that $15 for Say you're a family of four, dad and an older son that want to go on as many rides as possible. And mom and daughter want to go just stroll the park. The dad and the son can buy the, the ticket, the, the Genie Plus service for $30 for that one day. And mom and daughter can go do whatever they want. It's a win-win. Now, ultimately, as true Disney fans and in the lower income part of being Disney fans. When we go to parks, when we go to the Disney cruise line, we don't want to be nickel and dimed. So on our trip upcoming, I don't foresee us paying for it in advance, but I don't see us both paying for it except for maybe one day. And I think it'll be one of our animal kingdom days. Just make sure you can get into the flights of passage, but that might be one of those pay as you go ride. So with that, I, I highly recommend that you do not pay for it in advance. I recommend that you wait. It'll cost me some money on the package deal, but I would rather mark, mark it up and get you the memory maker package, which will be much better value for you than to get these lightning passes. Now, the other part of this, the last part of it, which we both hate and what we would never pay for, even if I win the Mega Millions or Powerball before our trip. And that is the, I call it the fancy ride pass at this point. I, I heard it on Disney Food Blog. That's kind of what spurred this podcast here. But the point of it is you get two rides per day that you can pay for. And these are the most popular rides. Like, for example, your Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, your Radiator Springs Racers in California. Now, there's no set price to this, so I can't even quote you a price because it's dependent upon the day, the volume of people in the park, and how popular the ride is. So one of the days that we go in the middle of the week, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train might literally be only $15 to pay to get through one time. Stupid. But if we went in, say, June, or even, heaven forbid, we go the week before we go on our cruise because somehow we managed to afford it. That Seven Dwarfs Mine Train would be $60, $90 maybe. Who knows? We don't know the parameters for it yet. So I would highly recommend if you want to do those rides, 
You're going to have to go commando style, be there at rope drop and go. Now, they're not going to let you just run in. They're going to hold you all back a bit. But as soon as you can get into that line, you get in that line. I'm sure we're going to be doing that at least one day for at each park for a mid major ride. Mm -hmm. But with that, let's get into what I kind of want to talk about with the last half of the podcast here. Okay, so we're going on our Walt Disney trip for the first time for the two of us. And let's go over our expectations, like what we want to experience, how we see the magic that's going to happen for us. So I'll start first. The two major things that I want to go experience are the Magic Kingdom, see how it compares to Disneyland itself. And then I want to go to Epcot. I want to experience the pavilion around the world, you know, the different countries, as well as um, Spaceship Earth. I know you want to go see a different park, a second park than I do, but I don't know about if you really want to go see the Magic Kingdom as much as I do. I'm not sure Magic Kingdom at the moment. I'm, I'm going to have to really look through and like see if there's anything different in comparison. Yeah, it is a bigger park than, you know, Disneyland side than at Disneyland, of course. But um, no, I would like, I'm, I'm excited for Animal Kingdom and Pandora. Pandora is going to be fantastic. I, I already know it. It's going to be. And that's why we scheduled Epic. two days there. So. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, other ones, uh, let me, let me, give me a moment because I'm going right. to look through I'll, everything and I'll then talk I will, for uh, a bit. I'll let you know. Okay. So I, I do want to go to Animal Kingdom. I want to go, actually, I want to go do Kilimanjaro Safari during the day. Hopefully we can get it when it's raining, but it is, we're also going in December, so it is going to be a bit cooler. So we won't have necessarily the heat keeping the animals out or keeping them, in, you know, away from our views. So you got one there? No, are you still looking? Uh, let me see. Honestly, I am really excited for the Hollywood Studios Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. I'm really, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, Hollywood. But, yeah. Hollywood I'm Studio, excited. that's where we can go do the um, Galaxy's Edge. Yes, yes. So Definitely. I, as much as I have not wanted to watch anything about Galaxy's Edge, it's been two years, and you can't not see it in people's vlogs when they go to Disney World or Disneyland anymore. Yeah. So it, it's kind of... Pointless. It, yeah. That being said, though, you can still have the, the joy, like... You see people doing the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, which is included in the Lightning pa the Disney Genie Plus Lightning Pass package. I, I, I agree with you. Um, but the point, point I'm trying to make, though, is that, you know, I'm still excited to do that because you have the two pilots, the two gunners, and then the um, two engineers that all have to oh, do yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Remember Adam and Gary doing that? Yep. Okay. Oh, and another quick note. We are both big fans of Adam Hatton and Gary C. I'm more of a Michael and David K fan than she is because they did something she doesn't like. I don't approve of. Let, let's go with approve of. Let's let's go with that one. They were at Alani and they had the opportunity to see who? They had the opportunity to see Stitch and they didn't do it. You're in Hawaii at a Hawaiian Alaska Alaska, Hawaiian Disney Resort, and you don't see Stitch. It is Stitch. Hawaii, Stitch, Ohana. Come on, like <laughs> it's it's one. You you don't go, like yeah maybe. Uh, if I remember correctly, that entire trip they did not get an opportunity to see him, and the one day they're like yeah. We're gonna go to the pool or whatever. Are they gonna where I forget where they were going, but shame. <laughs> Anyways. Shame. Oh my goodness. Yes, continue. Anyways, um the other the other thing that I wanna see at Epcot, or not so much that I wanna see, that I wanna experience, especially now that I know it's coming back officially. Club Cool. 
Now, that's the place where you get the little micro cups and you can try the different sodas from around the world and stuff, you know? Okay. Yeah. They have the pineapple Fanta, I believe, or they did. I'm doing this solely for Michael K. So he has somebody else who, who's with him on this. I'm going to try the Beverly. You're going to film me doing it. Okay. Yeah. It's so, okay. So mind you guys, we're going to be doing this and we haven't had sodas in over 10 years. The closest, well, we Wait, have sodas. We have root beer floats every once in a while. Th those don't, that's more of a dessert. And then but we like also soda, have soda, soda. We the we had the Mexican sodas, the Joritos. Mm. So like I'm meaning like Pepsi brand, Pepsi, name, name brand, you know, yeah. Mountain Dew. Well, uh, they, they, I'm just saying I'm pointing this out because if anybody goes, if anybody goes to my Twitch channel, yeah, or YouTube channels, they'll see that I have had those. Haritos and stuff, so. Anyways. But no, like legitimate sodas, like root beer floats, they don't really count. Like, I, I've been really doing, like, uh, seltzers. Yeah. But anyway, off subject. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it's actually. It's going to be so, they're going to be so gross because they're going to be so. Syrupy. Syrupy. Yeah. For somebody who hasn't had anything like that i'm i'm going i think i know it's so long i think i know what beverly is but i won't know till i try it and based on the people that i've seen their reactions that have tried it that what is like, it what do you think it is i'm going to save that for another episode because really? yes because i'm going to if not with you i'll probably do a planning video around this topic but you know um like how i would approach it from a travel agent perspective that or i might just be like okay i'm gonna write when we're there because i mean it's literally i think tomorrow marks 90 days till our trip yeah so, yeah yeah anyways um there's just so much at epcot that i want to try and there's yeah. so much at that animal kingdom that i know you want to try yeah such as um no he doesn't get to come with us as much as you would love him to See, did you hear him? He he, he protested. Anyways. Did you protest? Anyways. Anyway. Um, all right. Rank the importance of the parks in in order for you. Important like the... The priority, like one, two, three, four. Okay, so Magic Kingdom is, and then Epcot, and... No, like, in the order you that you want, that, like... No, I'm just... What it was? What's the list that I'm? Looking okay, so you're, you're looking at Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, and Hollywood Studios. Those are the four parks that we are going to because we're not going to the water parks. Animal Kingdom. Shh. Um. Possibly, probably, Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and then Magic Kingdom because you know, it's. It's the upgraded version of Disneyland. We've been there a few times. Yeah. I, I and, you know, it, it, it just, I'm not sure, but uh, I, I think I'm going to stick with that. So Animal, Hollywood, Epcot. Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. Yeah. yeah. It, it just doesn't work. Magic Kingdom just doesn't click. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. What about you? Uh, mine is. Magic Kingdom, actually, it's in the the order that I listed: Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is kind of that. I know enough of the history of the Disney parks that Hollywood Studios has been treated for the longest time like the. Oh, it doesn't go in Magic Kingdom. It doesn't go in Epcot. It doesn't go in Animal Kingdom. It's the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, it's 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 the the park that gets everything else. The. I love the fact that they, when they came out with MG, it was then MGM Studios. They came up with an idea for a ride. It was Tower of Terror. Florida had the first Tower of Terror. It is exactly 199 feet 11 inches, and some change on the the additional, you know, like meh fractions, you know, because they didn't want to put a red warning beacon light on top of it. For planes. See, this is what happens when you have Disney Plus and you watch behind the attractions and listen to Prentice tell you things as well. 
she narrates over it for us. But anyways, um, but the fact that they brought in solely for the purpose of Hollywood Studios, Galaxy's Edge there, that to me kind of, it's bringing it out of the, it's no longer just dump it park. It is literally, we have ideas, we have plans for this and let's bring it together. I believe they're coming out with, I think Tron Life Cycle's going in over there too. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Toy Story Land is there, which we'll be doing Slinky Dog. Have to do Slinky Dog. Um, but I want my, the reason why I rank Magic Kingdom so high is because I want to compare it to Disneyland from my own personal experience. However, if I remember correctly, and I don't have my phone with me, Okay, I have my phone with me. I believe the first day, the first full day we're there, our first park is going to be Animal Kingdom. Let me just pull up my Disney app. Nope. Passed it. And waiting for it to load. But I think that balancing the way you go to the parks and having a park hopper pass, I. You're you're iffy about park hopper passes, aren't you? Like you. Oh no, park hoppers are definite, definitely a thing that needs to be done. Um, I, I agree with how they have it set up. Be like, what wherever park you go to in the morning, you cannot go to the other park until two. Yeah, until two. And that honestly, if you get there at, you know, open, when it opens, that's plenty of time to get that park done, as I'm not looking. There we go. As we're, like, if you just, you know, do whatever you need to do at the first park. So, what, they open at eight, seven? Uh, generally, a uh, generally nine or eight, depending on the time okay, of year. Okay, so that's honestly that's six hours at the park, give or take a bit. That that's a good chunk of change at the park, and then you go to whatever other park you know strikes your fancy, and you know if you don't want to go to that Epcot for. Like, you only wanted to be there for that, that one ride. That's perfectly fine. Then you just go to a different park. You can go, you can hop as much as you want after two, which is fine. And my, honestly, I think that's perfectly a good chunk of chain, like a good time in a park to start your day. Yeah. Well, that's just me, honestly. I mean, in all, in all honesty, when I look at the parks and look at the rides and the maps and stuff, Animal Kingdom short of us wanting to ride the ride multiple times, um, I could see us being done with, if we go there at rope drop, say it, say it is eight o'clock the mm -hmm. day we go. I could see us doing that by 10, 30, 11 o'clock and be done with it. Yeah. At that point, if you know, we're doing our, um, park hop that day to the, to another park, you know, we'll have to wait. We'll have to kill some time. Perfect time to go resort hopping. Go check out Disney Springs. Yeah. You know, th if you think about it, you and I could um, go there day one, literally get the, the major rides that we want to get done and be like, okay, we're exhausted. Let's go take a break and let's go to Jumbo House. That's where they have, um, I think it's Sanaa's the restaurant name. Again, I haven't been there, so we I don't know everything. I'm learning it all. Yeah, we're, we're newbies, so. But the fact that we could go there and get brunch or lunch before we go park hopping, or maybe we go to the boardwalk and we go to Beaches and Cream and get a quick ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> we could go to uh, Guy Fieri's Disney Springs restaurant, uh, what is, what is it called? Guy's Chicken something? Something like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just there's so much to do there. 
when you go when you think about Disneyland, and this is why I understand people have this superiority complex that when they go to Disney World a lot, mm-hmm. and then they go to Disneyland and they're like, "What the heck is this?" Yeah, Downtown Disney is like I think half the size of Disney Springs, but you know, the fact that you have the opportunity to go and check out all this awesome stuff. Yeah. And then you can just go to another park. I don't agree with having to I don't agree with having to make reservations to a park, but I understand with COVID and all this other stuff we have to for crowd control purposes. So um what are some of your concerns about going to Disney World besides cost? For me, it is Well, again, with the new information about the Disney Genie Plus and the pay for rides, you know, it's like, where the hell am I going to do? What what the hell am I going to do? You know, I'm going to have to stand in line for, you know, these rides or I'm going to have to suck it up and pay for something to fast pass it. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have to do that. But on the bright side, there are plenty of photo pass opportunities and we have the memory maker package. Yeah, that that's definitely especially if you guys like your photos, you know, take photos of everything, professional photos, any type of photos. And, you know, you really want to have like, you know, albums or whatever at home. This is, this is what you need to do. Like, yeah, it could be kind of pricey if you, it'll be very pricey if you don't do the memory maker thing package. It's, it's, insane but if you do that it there is a bit of a discount yeah it's i believe if i remember correctly because i booked this so long ago i believe it is 3.99 for the memory maker package but if you were to pay for even half of what we plan on getting you're talking six or seven hundred dollars on top of that so like, don't get me wrong. You can just take your own photo. Like, have, like, one person in your family take the photo and, like, one person's missing out of, you know, the whole thing. Yet yeah, there are some amazing cast members. There, there are not some. There are amazing cast members that will, you know, take the photos for you. But, again, like, you're, like, that's what they're there for. But you're also taking them away from either, you know, helping other people or whichever like they they don't have any issues with it but again like they could be doing you know something ish else but yeah. you know anyway yeah so w- what are some of your concerns about disney world and oh yeah besides cost um for there are some like i have heard like some pros cons and everything con wise is for all of the parks, all of them, for, you know, not to be rushed the entire time or, um, you know, pushed or if you miss things, say, okay, so from rope drop till close, we don't take any breaks and we may stop for food maybe once or twice we're going to be wrecked the next day because we're going to be exhausted for the amount of attractions. Eight days with all of the parks. And, the okay, say eight days, and that's including if we were doing the water park, which we're not, wouldn't be nearly enough. It would be two weeks to get everything done comfortably, in my opinion, and a lot of others' opinion. But it, it's mainly just like, you, you want to be there. Yeah, you want to be there, have fun, experience the magic. But again, you, you got to really look at this like realistically, especially like for peoples with kids. And, you know, kids that need to take nap, food breaks, you know, bathroom breaks, everything, especially for little kids. You know, accidents happen. That's that's a thing too, 
But and then also, you know, pushing the kids to be like, hey, come on. Well, we got to we got to keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Parents are going to be in a crabby mood. The kids are going to be in a crabby mood. Like if you plan your trips, you know, say, okay, we're only going to be here for five days. We're only going to one park. That, that would be more doable, in my opinion. Say four days, your specific park, and then, you know, the last day, shopping. Because that's what I do. I try not to get any of my souvenirs, any big souvenirs, until the very last day. Because, you know, if you weren't at a uh, park hotel, you'd have to carry it all with you. Or go all the way back to your hotel and drop it off. Here it happens. So, like, if you're getting anything from any of the uh, souvenirs or anything, you're gonna have to. If you're not, oh, if you don't have a park hotel, if you're not in a park hotel, or you know, park, whichever, you know, if you're not staying at one of the Hot resort, resort hotels, that's it, thank you. You're gonna have to stop what you're doing, especially if you got a good chunk of stuff, you're gonna have to just stop what you're doing, stop with your rides, whatever, take it back to your hotel. So get a bus, Uber, whatever, go there, put it all away, and then you have the chance of falling asleep while you're there because you're just gonna, you know you're gonna sit down and then you're done. But anyway, Sorry. ranting, but... It's just, you know, I don't know. It's, I'd rather be, have a good amount of time to enjoy the parks. And, you know, like Animal Kingdom, I was looking at my list. 23 attractions is what we're going to be doing while we're there. 23 just for Animal Kingdom. Provided that they are open, you know, yes, refurbishment is an, is an issue at places. So, I mean, we could... yeah, exactly. But again, like the, just for that 23 in a day with in December holiday, whatever, yeah, it's going to be busy ish. But again, it's, it's just, it all depends on, you know, if we can make it work, hopefully we can make it work. But again, and that's why I chose doing the eight days. There's, I think, two parks that we are for sure doubled up on. Well, no, actually, we. I think we're. I think we doubled on everything and tripled one. Yeah, we'll we'll be doing that, but the point the point of it is is literally we are trying to go so that way we're not burning ourselves out, and we can hit the like. Like, say we go to Animal Kingdom, and then after we're done there and we, we want to park hop on the first day, say we go to Epcot. We can go ride a couple of the, the smaller rides, you know. and or, Enjoy the... I was going to say enjoy the AC, but we're going to be there in the winter, so... It's still, you'll still want the AC. But, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing is you'll notice the difference, especially I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the vlogs turn out when we go is your time management you're on you're on the clock we've got 15 minutes to walk from this part to this point and get I'm there. not that bad come on like I, I know where we're gonna go like first okay first ride each park where are we going in your opinion like where do you mandatory top five rides at that park okay if so, there are top five yeah. okay so so magic kingdom magic kingdom seven dwarfs First, first one. I don't care what the line wait time is. We're going, yep. to, especially if we hit rope drop. Yep. Uh, but at the same time, if we go, if we go later because we slept in or something, yep. I, I'm willing to push that off to the side. Okay. Um, Epcot for me. I want to say it is what. Test, test track would probably be one there for me. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Me too. Rock and roller coaster, obviously. Yep. Um, Animal Kingdom, Flight of Passage. Oh, we got to do Soaring. Well, I think that's at Epcot too. Um, and then Hollywood, we're going to have to go one day for Rope Drop, like be there as early as we can for Rise of the Resistance. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. Because of virtual queue? Yeah, you have yeah. to. Yeah, but but with, that's kind of her mentality. My mentality is like, okay, we're here. Let's enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we can't get something done today, we still have another day. Let's get what we can done today, get the other stuff done later. And that's why I will prioritize, you know, the first day that we go to a park. We're hitting the bigger rides, especially because we're planning on being there when they open. If for whatever reason we can't hit that ride or it's down that day, try to come back on a park hop or something later. Don't mind the horses. <laughs> so they know it's almost dinner time. They're burning calories before dinner. Yeah. But... Anyways, I'm actually looking forward to the trip. I know you're looking forward to the trip. Other than the cost and the Disney Genie Plus BS there, what what are you most excited about? Honestly, this is going to be our first vacation in five years. So, honestly, it, it will be a bit, you know too much at first be like oh my gosh well we have this 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 this, this. but again like I'm, I'm trying to um like i i have like yeah i like i enjoy myself and like i have fun and everything but again there are days where it's just like you get overworked i'm, I'm just hoping it's not that because there's so much it is a ginormous park and it, it's just i am I'm working on trying to talk to Michael K and also Adam Hatton. And hopefully we can do kind of a, not a live stream, but like a sit down where we can sit there and pick their brains. Yeah. I don't think it will happen before we get to go on the trip, mm -hmm. but I hope I can get it to work. That said, I agree with you. There's just, it's a lot, especially since this is our first vacation. Yeah. Since, we went to Hawaii and that was, you know, it'll be just over five years that since we went on that. And I hope we can actually go there and understand that treat it like we did our second Disney trip. Yeah. We kind of had the, the priority of going there the first time so we could, relax a little bit more with this one and just yeah. kind of take it slow. But the fact that we are going by ourselves, we have nobody that we know going with us. We have nobody that we know that's there that we might run into. Yeah. It'll be nice because we can take it at our pace. And if that pace day one day is fast and the next day is slow, that's what we got to do. Totally fine as well. So, but with that, and as I've told everybody else, we're going on the Disney Wish in August next year. I can't wait to pick your brain on that one when we get a little closer. Probably after the new year, um, we'll do that one. Yeah. And we will maybe um, sit down and do a live stream with um, after the, the trip to Disney World and kind of discuss what you liked or what you didn't like. And if not... We'll do another video like this. So, yeah. With that, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. I know this has been a little bit slightly longer than I anticipated it going, but it'll be it'll be worth it. So, I was only planning a half an hour, and it's probably going to be like forty minutes, so ten minutes. But you know, it's all fun talking about travel and stuff. So don't forget to click the links down below. And have um, have fun checking out pause streams. You'll you obviously have my streams on Twitch as well. And make sure that if you want to book a vacation, you contact me at j at hopskipandadream dot com. I'm more than happy to plan not just a Disney vacation, but vacations to Sandals beaches, um, even a weekend getaway to New York or Vegas. You just let me know what you're looking for, and I will help you as best I can. And if I don't have the answer, I know somebody who does. So we'll be able to get you hooked up. With that, any last words there, Pause? 
honestly, like, just remember, you guys are fantastic. You guys are amazing. And, you know, this is going to be a thing. We got this. He has this. He, he is amazing. And, you know, just do what you do. <laughs> Bye. Peace.